of their own sensibility, but in some sense, uh, at least in this country, there's the feeling that you, beside, as well as representing yourself as an artist, that your work represents a political movement. Uh, could you comment on that? You see yourself as a representative of a, of a movement? Well, uh... Yes, now it's too. I, ca I can't answer any more those questions because can I see myself as a representative of a movement? I mean, there is. I'm too. I think I just don't know. Can I see what is what is can? What is I? What is see? I don't know what is a representative. I don't know what is representation. I begin to have some ideas because I work in. Movie, movie, which, which are in a way representation of something, but I don't know exactly uh, what's exactly this something. So it's uh, it's very hard to to understand to to answer that kind of question, we, we, which are not really questions uh, you are, in my opinion, interested with. You are just uh, it's already it's it's almost answers put into a question way, but it's already an answer. And the answer is, uh, there, is a, there is a representation of a movement, and uh, when you are ma making a movie, you, you are in a way representing a, a movement. It's too, it's too complex of things. We have to, to slow down and to, to study. Uh, I can't answer the, this question. I don't know. I can say, yes, I am, or no, I'm not. And, uh, for me, the same, but it won't help you. So I'm asking what, what the only thing I can ask you is to return you to you another question. What makes you ask this kind of question? Are you interested? Does it help you? Uh, how does it help you? Or and if if I say yes, what's what's new to you? And if I say no, uh, what's the difference? Well, if I go to a Fellini movie, I think I understand what he's trying to do. When I go to a Godard movie, I'm not always sure what you're trying to do. You know, may I ask another way? There are two of you here working together. You know, when you make films, maybe maybe let's begin, Catherine. That working together. What do you know about working together? Do you know about. What's working together? I think I'm just beginning to discover because before I worked alone. I was together and I'm still together with a lot of people. <coughs> Here we are together and uh, in another way uh, we have really nothing uh, to, to work together. Just uh, question and answer that way doesn't mean uh, it's obviously nothing. If we ask questions, if you ask questions and if we answer by answers, it's only a disguise to the reality, which is, uh, which is, uh, we have not really nothing to say. Maybe we are here, we, we just don't know why. I don't, at least I know why I'm here, at least because uh, I needed money. The only way to get that money was to ask uh, some American university, which are the richest among the world, if they were interested to show our movie. And if we came, if they can uh, give us a, uh, uh, some money. So there is a reason. It's not the only reason. There must be some underneath reason uh, which we can discover from this. Uh, well, well, why do you need the money uh, except uh, in order to live? Well, this is uh, except. Uh, this is already. This except is almost uh, 99 percent. <laughs> why do you make films? <laughs> Uh, in fact, uh, there are two things. The, the first thing, I mean, at, at least in France, and we've discovered that it's exactly the same thing here. The big scandal is that we're making films, we two to make films, and that we are saying and proving that we can we can be two to direct film. That's a big scandal in France because Jean-Luc has, on account of his, of his previous work, <clears throat> revolutionized the cinema in such a way that the whole mystique of the author has been concentrated on him. 
And in France, people don't really accept at all that we are two to do the film. Even here, I mean, for, for instance, in Ohio, we are speaking uh, very, very precisely of the type of work we were doing. Uh, they refused to accept it, and it appeared that it was only Jean-Luc who had said all those things. I mean, th there is a basic fact, and it's, it's, it's a both aesthetical and political to say that we are two to make films, but it's something, something important. We are not the, the only ones to do that in France. I mean, in other fields, especially in, whether it's in philosophy, whether it's in writings, more and more people are getting in that, in that kind of thing. Think of that role, uh, the making of films with two or more people, and some of the films, the worker films like Coup pour Coup and, and Weekend Asso Show, and films like that will change filmmaking and change the content substantially because of the fact that they're made by a group or by. I'm saying basically, uh, yes. I mean, it's not. Uh, they, they, were, they were alone. They were alone. They were not uh, in Coup pour Coup or in other movie like that or in a. Uh, movie like uh, here, Salt of the Salt of the Earth, like Biberman, even if he was maybe related to the workers in such a way, he was still, uh, it was still alone. Uh, he was still alone when, when he was doing the movie, like the workers are alone when they are working. And uh, to try to be good together, I mean, the only, the only, the only reference is the, uh, uh, the love, uh, the love machine. Because uh, to make to to love, uh, to be in love with someone, you've got to be two. You understand it very easily because uh, you think you you understand what love means. Uh, not necessary to to build the children, just to to build uh, to to build a, a love machine. You can't be, you can't be alone. You can't be alone. Well, for the working machine, it it is the same. And uh, you can understand, uh, I begin to understand how to to be united on a certain kind of assembly line, which is an assembly line of <coughs> images and sound, because this is the way uh, a film is done. Is uh, You edit, uh, you assemble the image in a certain order, just like in a, at Ford's, you are assembling cars in a certain order and in a certain speed. So you, you can understand how to, to be united on an assembly line. Uh, you get to get to, to be to, to be two. You, you have to think of you as two. This is what the new. Maybe you can be more, a group or a whole people. But I think uh, this is a, a very difficult thing, and that's why in the art business, if people are, are doing so, they are trying to to separate you. I think the the, the more revolutionary real little uh, things I invented in the movie, the more I was inventing some who was really revolutionary, the more I was emphasized or focused on as an author, as a, some kind of a genius, a god. And, and the two things uh, going together, it was uh, not possible to use it a revolutionary way, even if the move was... Uh, some kind of revolution, because on the other end it came that genius stuff who makes appear the whole of it like a God's creation, you know. The trouble with God, he was alone when he was alone, when he created uh, the world. It's not a problem of uh, denying Jean-Luc's past. I mean, I, I learned movies throughout Jean-Luc's films, and when I wanted to go into, the, into filmmaking, I couldn't go to anyone else but Jean-Luc. And uh, <clears throat> the problem is that the, the people we share something with, whether in literature, whether in paintings, whether in, uh, in, our, in other fields, are people which, who were, whether exiled people, whether bilingual, whether people considered as schizophrenic. And in a certain way, the type of connection I have with Jean-Luc is uh, that's the connection between two types of madness. It's a certain, a certain way to put ourselves in a position of exile, to cut ourselves from our own cultural root and to connect things, so to bring new things on, on, on the stage. One interesting thing is that, <clears throat> for instance, in Tout va bien, 
most of the critics thought about it as a highly Godardian film. And in fact, the, most of the highly Godardian thing in Tout va bien came from me. Because really, I was obliged to go back and what Jean-Luc had discovered, and did, that it had, which he has forgotten himself, to try to bring those things back again and to, to give them a new content. I think the, 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 the new is always coming from the old. That's why the films we're making are so closely related in a certain way and so different in another of the, the previous work Jean-Luc had, had, had done. So you, uh, you, you view Tuvalian as a coming together of, say, uh, prior to the See You at Now film of Godard's work and the work that has been happening since See You at Now? No, I think it's not exactly that. I mean, uh, Tout va bien came from the fact that for four years working together and making, uh, let's say, seven or eight films, we had the feeling that at a certain time we had to uh, get back into normal distribution in a certain in a certain way, not to be uh, trapped in a kind of ghetto, and uh, to uh, put on the screen some of the lessons, that is, some of the contradictions that we we learned in the previous film. So we decided to make a quote normal film, and to make a quote normal film is to be backed by stars. So that's why we went to Yves and Yves Montand and Jane Fonda, but because they're not only international movie stars, but they're internationally international movie star, color, politically connoted. Jane doing her thing here and Eve being connoted another way in France. And we decided to have another star in the film, which was uh, the, the, the star script of all times, which is Love Story. And by the way, the first, the real title of Tout va bien is Love Story, which was at that time a very successful film. It's an item to... to uh, to create a fiction which at each moment which re will uh, reveal its conditions of production and by, by that way, its condition of conception. I have a question of giving back in the past. I was kind of intrigued by the our study, local study paper. There was like a cartoon by Johnny Hart. One of the few funny things called BC, but it said, a lady walks by and says, that was a perfect example of semantic action. What semantics, you know, the caveman says, it's the science of conveying thoughts through abstract utterances. He says, the heck you say, it's true. And then it says, if it's true, how come she didn't redden my cheeks? Which reminds me of a couple of lines, two or three things I know about her, where you're discussing the question of language and semantics itself. And I was wondering whether this uh, new film that's coming is a uh, departure because one needs to get the revolutionary message across in another way, or whether having worked through much of the intellectual talk about uh, talk itself, you have found somehow the spoken word somehow inadequate. Because again, what I was thinking of is that that picture in some ways sums up much of uh, you know, what you've been doing uh, before, because it's uh, you have been showing, I think, how language works in the film, and here you seem to me, me at least to be explicitly talking about the theories Peron, Wittgenstein, uh, Merleau-Ponty and, and uh, all of these sorts of movements. And then by the time we get to, uh, to Ma and things of this sort, the, the images cannot keep up with, the words cannot keep up with the images. And so words have somehow become bankrupt. And uh, at that point, did you decide to go to a different kind of thing? Or how do you feel about, uh, about semantics? Thing? It's, it's very hard for me to, to answer to this uh, how do you feel question. Uh, how do you feel about semantic? Is it hard to leave? Uh, to, to answer that like if you every time we are we, we are we are greeted uh, when we arrive in Portland uh, from Seattle, uh, we are asked how did you feel about Seattle? And then uh, <laughs> tomorrow tomorrow in Eugene it will be Same how do you feel about Portland? Right. This is a really huge question. It will take me ten years if I really want to answer that question. What do you think about you, you So I'm I'm more interested to say uh, but there is something, the feel, the relation between uh, how do you feel is the wrong things. But there is something practically, it's the how question, how. But we, we are interested in the how question more than in the why question. Because we think we, don't, we can't answer the why question uh, right away. 
Uh, why am I here? I don't know. I can't answer. It's too complex. It's, it will go. Uh, it will take more than my life to, to answer that question. But how am I here? That we can answer. How are we functioning here? Or oh, at least, and that's why we are trying to, <coughs> to do films today. Who will say how it works? How some things which we are dated, for example, in Touvadien, how France is working in 1972. What makes France uh, work that way? It's, and we show on the blackboard, which is used just as a, as, as a blackboard, uh, we, we put problems on this blackboard and we don't put faces. Or we use faces in, in order to put problems through faces. Because if there is only faces, we are completely mixed up. We are asking questions who you are and know how do you function. When referring to that question of language, I don't think there is a... There is a basic change, but coming from things that Jean-Luc had done previously. I mean, in, in his early, earlier film, I mean, to me, the most interesting thing that was that he didn't write a line. Everything was quotation from uh, even very casual things like give me the salt or something like that. And uh, because everything was quota quotation taken from books that Jean-Luc was reading at that time and everything was a matter of montage, <coughs> there was some sort of wiping out of any possibility for the actor to give a line any type of psychological depthness or so-called psychological depthness. You had that strong feeling in Jean-Luc's previous film that something was speaking behind the actor and that something was made of torn elements of the society in its role, I mean, in its language. Well, when uh, we made that turn using uh, rather a heavy Marxist statement or, or things like that, I, didn't think, I don't think it's, uh, it's a big turn because it was using them exactly the same way that they were used before. I mean, but we, we, had, we had to deal with a certain theoretical background to try to understand what was really happening in our own life and in the society we were living in, which was France. And now we've made with Touvabien a, a real change in that sense that we, we've emphasized more on trying to write a certain type of, of, uh, of lines, trying to build a certain type of lines which are both realistic and unrealistic. We're m mainly dealing with language, with uh, the problems of lang language all the time, I mean. But uh, right now, and I think in Tuvabia you'll see that it, it's, it goes far, it, it begins to be far more simple and at the same time far more tricky. Because you have sliding effects inside the line uh, all the time. I mean, it's like the some kind of distorted language. I mean, going from reality to abstraction, theoretical abstraction, and then going back to reality and working that way. So more or less the same problem. In some of the early ones, you did have Sean Son do his own lines and so on. Like the film where he and the girl are sitting in the room of car. He's more, more or less giving his own lines about the revolution in 68. I think the story that you, you, however, gave the line to the, the girl who was the, the actress that John Sloan pretty much spoke to the well, Maybe the big difference in, is that there is no improvisation at all in Tuvabia. What kind of a script did you work off of? Did you have, did you have a formal uh, script? Yeah. yeah. How did you, you talked before about a sort of schizophrenia, my look at your relationship as a sort of schizophrenia. What, uh, what face do you represent that and what face do you represent especially in relation to the film? Well, it's, <clears throat> it's more complicated than that. There is a book which was published in France two, uh, four months ago or six months ago. We are deeply committed to and we, <clears throat> we tried to work with the two people who wrote the book and it's a book called uh, Capitalism and Schizophrenia. And uh, it's a very important book. It's a book made by Deleuze, Gilles Deleuze and Félix Guattari. It's a very important book in that sense. That's the first time it's a strong attack on Freudian theory. 
it's coming directly from social events in a certain way. It's a, it's a philosophical book and an analytical book too. But the the main the main aspect of this book is to describe the whole capitalist machine, the whole capitalist system as a as a schizophrenic machine, coding and decoding at an incredible speed, and functioning only on the paranoia of the people. I think we have two poles in us, which uh, is the first, the first one being a the paran paranoid pole, which is the pole of our own oppression, the pole of uh, our way to respect the taboos and uh, the standards of the society we're in. And we've also a pole of evasion, which is a schizo, a schizo pole at that time. And I think in both of us, those two poles exist. I mean, but we're really uh, trying to evade more and more, let's say, the paranoid aspect of certain things we've done. Which can be a heavy Marxist statement at a certain point. Right now, I mean, two years two years ago, we would we would have used a heavy political, you know, language. Right now, we think that <coughs> there is no no more need to uh, to speak about politics because uh, in this about politics, there is a definition of what politics is, which is something which oppresses us. So we speak about aesthetics because we found that aesthetics is only one of the categories of politics. And it, maybe it's more political not to speak about politics in the days we are living. That three years of learning, you know, and getting punched in the face in France. You're quoted uh, as describing Tuvok Yen as materialist fiction filmmaker for a large audience. Could you elaborate on that, either one of you? Well, for a, for a larger audience than it was uh, before. And right. uh, that's why we needed a star. Star to, in order to reach this larger audience. Because if you don't have star one way or another, through a, a star script or a, a star actor, you don't reach, uh, you don't You don't reach have to draw. Uh, you don't, it's not possible to go in the usual way of uh, releasing a movie. And we thought it was uh, about the time to try to, at least to be, to be seen by uh, more people than, uh, than before. And right. for us to be seen by uh, half a million people in France was a, a, it was a big success. Uh, it was not a success for the distributor. It's not, uh, it's not enough uh, for him, for, for the budget of the film, but uh, for us it was, a, it was a success. Another thing is when you, uh, <clears throat> you make a film dealing with social events uh, nowadays, you have to, uh, and especially events happening in the working class, <clears throat> you, have to fight the, you have to fight a certain tradition, which we call the bitter man's tradition, which is... Uh, some type of some type of critical realism, uh, mainly functioning on emotion, and only on the level of emotion, and not linking emotion with thinking. So that's why that's why to Verbier in that sense is a very different film. It's a film uh, deeply committed to Brecht and Brechtian theory. It's a film full of theatrical metaphors. It's a film which tried to analyze and to describe. Uh, in fact, it's a film made about three sounds, three noises which are the, the main noises, the main sounds which define the situation in France. And it's a film done on the, con the connection of those three noises. It's a way to link them together and linking them together to disconnect the normal, so-called normal links we submitted to. Who will distribute uh, your picture in the United States? You know yet? No. Would it be a major no one? No, I don't think so. We, we thought we had a deal with Paramount, but it was, uh, it's not going well, so up to now we don't know. But that's what you'd like to have? A major di distributor? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. But since it, we didn't put the money personally, I mean, uh, uh, we have certain... Uh, uh, we can't give it... Uh, Freely to some friends or some people, even if we wish we could. Like we did with other 16 movies. 
Changing to the other film for just a moment, your letter to James, which I haven't seen yet. It's interesting that it comes up in the, in the face of recent happenings. Uh, again, the political paranoia, schizophrenia in this country, where on the one side, uh, one person says the presidency says something, then on the other hand, they send more planes in to continue the bombing. And of course, the bombing of the French uh, embassy a few days ago, which uh, Mr. Laird said uh, could have been done by an impact of Russian missile fired astray, yet which the Canadians, uh, I wouldn't think, it, it uh, couldn't have happened. Uh, it seems it's a very opportune time to bring something like this. And what seems to have been the uh, reaction of the American public to the, to the places, in the places where you've shown this so far? Well, that they just turned it off. Again, uh, it's a very peculiar picture. I mean, it's, uh, it, it shouldn't be called, it's a mistake of us, so that uh, we call it letter to Jane. It should be called investigation about a still or anatomy of a still. It is just an uh, investigation uh, with the, through, uh, with our, with the help of the camera and our relationship with the camera. An investigation about a still we received. A still who was sent by the North Vietnamese and Jane, and uh, we re and we received it uh, through the press because it was a still who was printed, and we are just uh, trying to to investigate how this still was produced and uh, how is it co consumed. I mean, uh, how do we look on, on it when we receive it where we are? And uh, we are trying maybe to, to say that uh, it's not, nothing is not so clear. It's a picture about the, it's a picture about the media. So it's a picture about a picture. Um, it would have been better to just to write on it in a, in a motion picture review. And uh, it would have been much better because it deal with space and not with time. The way things are put, uh, uh, and this is the task of the motion picture review, but since uh, the journalists are, are never doing this job, are never trying to investigate what is the relation between a line they are writing and uh, a photograph uh, which is taking, and it's only the editor which is putting them together. And uh, we don't think that the, this putting together is innocent. Most, uh, most critics are really just reviewing very few They really want to explore into what, what the person oh, is saying a, or what the meaning of the images are. It's a very provocative in a way picture because it's, uh, it's smashing all uh, the so-called militant ideas about the media. Think, uh, who thinks just because they are shooting at the worker's face, they bring a worker's uh, idea or works work as action or revolution on the screen, just like, just like that. But it's a picture, we'll, uh, it's, it's way of, of, of working, it's exactly like Tuva Bia. it begins with production it, and ends with consumption. In this still, it was produced a certain way by the North Vietnamese uh, with the help of Jane Fonda. And then it was in order to be consumed later on in America, to the press or in Europe, where we looked on this picture in a newspaper. Of course, it's exactly like Tout Va Bien, which you will see is beginning with the product. The beginning of the movie deals with the production of goods in a factory and is ending in a supermarket where you see the same goods cons uh, consumed. And from the production to the consumption, there is a Kind of a, the film is only a tracking shot, not in space, not in space, but in time, which goes from production to consumption. And uh, between production and consumption, there is a, a communicate, there is a distribution. Like in a, we are in a capitalist society, and this, and this is the way it works. And so this is why we are making it <coughs> work that way uh, on on the screen. Trying just to, to describe how it works. Letter to Jane is, is a very specific film. I, I, it was made for uh, <coughs> for our coming at the New York Film Festival. It is a <coughs> way to introduce to Vabia from the outside. It's a rather provocative way, and we're quite aware of it. 
and uh, it will never be shown in France. I mean, it's uh, it's a film that we can destroy after our tour in the United States. It's a film which costed three hundred dollars and was shot in one day. It's uh, just an exercise. A, a few years ago, there were, were reports in this country that you were going to uh, direct a film called Little Murders, which then you didn't do. Um, did, did you really? No, I, uh, I was working on this. Yeah, but uh, I changed the script, uh, made another script that was in fact written by Bob Benton and David Newman, the one who wrote by the time uh, Bonnie and Clyde. And the script was refused by a United Artists and uh, they still owe me $5,000 it. <laughs> well, I, what I wanted to ask is now that you guys are looking for a wider audience, is it likely you think that... No, we are trying, but it's difficult because... Uh, <laughs> Every time the real question is, what? It's, I mean, uh, Paramount is asking us, or Metro, I mean, Hollywood, is asking us the same question that we are asking too. What kind of picture do we want to make? And because we don't want to, at a certain point, we don't, we are on the same basis than them. It's not because uh, we don't believe in these underground stuff or overground stuff. I don't know whether I'm underground or overground or besides ground. I don't know. Space stuff. <laughs> I, I want to. So, so we think. Yeah, we, we thought an, uh, of an idea. We are. We might be working uh, on an idea, which we think uh, might be a uh, good uh, to reach uh, the audience. Uh, uh, in a larger way, in a larger way, it, uh, it came from a quotation from Laurence Durel, Jean-Pierre Laurent read someday, and it was a, uh, Durel was saying that maybe the parents would have, would be obliged very soon to speak between themselves, the adults will speak, will be obliged to speak to each between themselves only through dirty jokes or things like that. Like in order not to be, in order to not to be uh, understood by the alliance of the children and the computers. Okay, so since the gentlemen have to get ready for their uh, main presentation, I think we should let Charles do questions. Just, just proceed. I don't think we're quite ready to go yet. Is this a film that you might make in the United States? No, 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 but maybe so no we are idea. thinking of that, that maybe it can interest a, a major company. I see. Uh, I, at the very beginning, part of what I was trying to ask is, are the two of you a working group, or are you part of a larger working group? And if it's a larger working group, could you talk a little about how it works? No, I mean, uh, <clears throat> we met around 60... 66 or 67 when Jean-Luc was doing La Chinoise and we had two years of loose discussion on uh, cinema and theory in, in cinema and decided after next, May 68 to begin to do film together. At that time we, that was part of the May, May 68 spirit in the field of movie making. We decided to raise a a certain type of flag, which was Ziga Ziga Vertov, and Ziga Vertov flying. Uh, why Ziga Vertov? Because Ziga Vertov at that time was almost unknown, especially in France. Uh, his uh, his fame uh, being recovered by being uh, veiled by the fame of Eisenstein, and. Uh, we were at that time. We were asking ourselves the question. We were at every every. People in uh, in filmmaking was uh, wondering about you know the the distribution and saying that the main task was distribution and at that time we thought that we had to emphasize on production what kind of movie to produce and uh, how to produce them uh, since we, we the the Digavert of group has only been Jean Luc and me for four years so uh, it's uh, and we've not been very clear about that because uh, we we didn't we and we still don't know how to handle, you know, the media thing, journalists and things like that. We don't know really how to answer, and uh, it's part of. Uh, that's why mainly in France we we missed the whole. Uh, we were off by, based on on the question of distribution for Tuvalier. 
we're very strong on the problem of production. We know how, what kind of film we want to, to do and how to do them. In fact, as Jean-Luc pointed out, we're making films to make other films. But, and that's, that's more or less what Paramount and the majors are doing. But in fact, they're making films to do exactly the same film the next time. And that's why they need to change title and even to have new directors. But we're making films to make different films from the, the one we precede. And uh, that's the big difference, I think. We're mainly interested in differences. And uh, if you look at a film, the only definition we can give of a film is to say a film is a machine. A machine which pieces are not made of steel or um, in a, a mad machine which pieces are torn parts of the old social corps. A machine who, who failed. And the interesting thing in a machine, it's the moment of machine failing. And that's, that's, that's what we're doing. It's not a problem of, when, uh, it's not a problem of, co of content. I mean, a film is the, the relationship, the connection between two shots. It's this thin line between two shots, which is a moving line. It's a, a way to say that films are really the things which happen between the images. And I think in Tuvabien we succeed in, on that ground, because you can't look at any shot of Tuvabien seeing it as a, something closed, something per se. It's always a film full, uh, it's a film full of openings and holes and constantly evading from itself. Is that, that's one of the things we, we're interested in. I'd like to add to the guy just briefly. Um, you were talking about the conception of, of the media that your, uh, the film that you're showing now um, has to do with. Could, could you uh, just briefly state the sense or the notion of, of of media as a product, or elaborate on that, that notion. Well, five minutes ago I was doing so, and I told you that what's between uh, production of goods and consumption of goods is the media. But to understand that, you have to see, you have not only to speak of, you have to, to conceive of what's the notion of production of goods and production of, uh, and consumption of goods. Consumption is still a, a production. You shouldn't speak of, in a factory, when you think of a factory, you shouldn't speak only in terms of production, but production of production. And when you are consuming, it's a production of consumption. There is all, just nothing on the world but production, but production at different level, at different uh, speed. In the factory, uh, you have production of production, and in uh, in the life, in a in a shop, in a supermarket, or in a, in a love affair, when you are consuming your uh, your desire, you have production of consumption, and between them, you have distribution, which. You have to think of as a production of distribution. That's why movies are distribution, but they are a production of this. That's why we are called producers. We are, produ we are producers of distribution. This is a, it, it looks, and it's no joke, it's not uh, Wittgenstein. I mean, it's not, uh, maybe Wittgenstein can help to understand those things in, in a way, but this is the way the capitalist machine is working. So in the movie, I mean, uh, since we begin, we begin to try to be aware of our own uh, means of production, what makes this picture possible? We wanted, uh, as you will see in a movie, we want to make a movie. We want to make a love story. But then you need money. To need money, you have to bring a script. But this script to be accepted, you have to have stars, to high stars, and so on. This is the way a movie is produced. But the movie itself, it's a production of distribution in the whole capitalist machine. The movie belongs to the media, like the press, like TV, like uh, uh, writings, like uh, schools too, like the teaching, like the relation between schools and pupils. This is a production of distribution, and this is the way it goes. There is three things, production of production, production of distribution, and production of consumption. And we begin to under this book uh, Jean-Pierre was telling you about is beginning is the first one who begins to think of the uh, consumption thing in, ter in the same term than the producing thing. 
he speaks and Freud was not doing that. And that's why he was in a way, uh, even if he, what he invented, he was a bigger inventor than I was, but what he, he, he was inventing, uh, going deep into the family system, it was real revolution. And it was because it was real revolution, a strong attack against the family. Then the capitalist machine distorted all the Freudian discoveries <coughs> and made Freud say that everything goes wrong, it's because of this Oedipian thing. And just by that, we are beginning to discover that the Oedipian myth is a strong, I mean, is an agent of capitalism. It is a way to reproduce the family system the way it works, just like in a Godfather. <laughs> then it leads us to ask, uh, to ask ourselves and to ask the audience very simple questions, like, uh, what, is, what is framing? How, how do you frame? How do you, uh, how do you focus? Things like that. We just begin to discover I mean, this gentleman, and I mean no harm against him, but if I'm asking him, what's framing? What's an angle? What's a close-up? And don't give me ready, ready-made answer by dictionary. Just think of, of what's the relation with is just zooming on you in a close-up. What does it mean in terms of his desire? Because you want that, and he want what the society wants in the same way. You see, there is a lot, of, we just begin to discover, I mean, because we are in the movie, we begin really to, to be able to, to, to raise to ourselves, and then uh, with the help of the audience, new questions from an aesthetic point of view, because it deals with, directly with politics. <coughs> I think when someone is shooting right, I mean right now, as is not shooting really, is shooted at. I mean, uh, is he, you're not writing, you're written. I mean, and, and he's having a big CBS trip, which just, is channeled to here. Just, and that's a problem to yeah. us. To me, for example, this man is, I will, I will call it just the name of Polaroid. Is, uh, is, uh, the Polaroid uh, company is, uh, is, has named this camera. He's a square shooter. <laughs> <laughs> and you, it's, it's written on the Polaroid camera, square shooter number one, two. <laughs> and when you say to someone is a, that he's square, it's, it's very pejorative. <laughs> well, he's a square shooter. And in this ad by Polaroid, they just say, take a picture, see a picture, take another picture, see another picture. It's only one dollar, one dollar or two dollars or twenty dollars. That's what you, we are trying not to just take a picture, see a picture, take a picture, see a picture, take a picture, see a picture. Wait, I can say, we are trying to know what's between, that to try to take pictures and then to edit them. Because we became aware that when Polaroid is saying, take a picture, see a picture, they don't speak of the editing system of this, but the editing system is the whole society, which the way it is done, and you are just a, a Polaroid or a Kodak man to me, even if you are not, and you are not even paid by Kodak. You're paying for that. I mean, maybe the main problem we're facing now is to, uh, and as it is stated in Tout Bien, to try to invent new forms which will suit new contents. Because we have a strong feeling that we're facing and we're involved in new Everything, contents. Yeah. We, we are involved in contents. Everywhere around the world there is new contents. New contents brought by the woman against the man, by the children against the, their parents, by uh, the workers against their boss, by the North Vietnamese against America, by the Palestinian against Israel, and so on. But all this new content, it's very hard for the, all those people to, to, to build it through their own, uh, with their own blood and, uh, and flesh. They need, they need uh, new forms. And sometimes they haven't got the time to, to be the new forms together, just because they are beaten hard by the older people, the old content uh, people. So, this is our, if we are in the media, if we are what is called intellectual, an intellectual being in the media, 
this is our, our job. I think the movies more than ever is useful. is useful because it deals with information and happily enough in such a we are not on TV. If I was on TV, I could never say an inch of what I was saying. But I can think of TV and I can be aware of that every word I'm saying is surrounded by the TV system, even if I don't look at it. Even if you don't go to TV, now the way you are looking to a picture when you go in a theater is determined much more than before by the way 80 million American or half a, a quarter of the globe is, is looking on TV. Are there other filmmakers working today who you feel are colleagues in this direction you're going? Or you feel pretty long? I think there might be one, but unknown one. What's his name? Unknown, unknown people. Uh, but the, do you go to other, do you and see the work that's coming out, go to a lot of movies? Or? Yeah. No, but there is a lot of crap. Crap. I mean, the way the questions are raised and the way we can answer to this, I mean, it's two years ago it was not the same here. I mean, we feel even it's very awkward, but there is no more that kind of uh, uh, universitarian style question about the movie was still, uh, or people are fed up too with the, are you how do you make revolutionary movies or not, or things like that. But they are just more interested to change their old world. I think the real question, which is going awkwardly and uh, very unex unexplicitly inside each people, it's uh, how to change the old world, because uh, it's not going well, obviously. And that's why we're not trying to uh, give answers, but more to trying to build new questions. And so the uh, real question and the real answer can be, so how does it work? And not, not how does it work in general, but how does it work today? Precisely. Or how does work our relation today, here? Before seeing this movie or after having seen, what's going on? Because it's no need to go uh, <coughs> to deal with two general problems. Does this kind of contact have any relation for you with your work? When you, I mean, you must do yes. this all the time. Oh, sure, because yeah. it means work. And for us, I mean, when we, when we say we are here in business, it joking. means we are here for work. It's a way to inquire on things. It's a way also to... Uh, we, are pay, we, we are paid for doing that, but uh, we have to talk, and to talk is not easy. Right, but will you... Will, I mean, will this be forgotten when you go back to your No, I don't no, think so. No, because we are, we, we are, as we told it, uh, we did that because we were unable to do it in France. We, did, we didn't do it, and we were puzzled, and uh, I was uh, afraid to, uh, and I think something going wrong because we should have done it in France, but it was a fact that we had not done it. So we thought uh, maybe we can uh, we can take the chance when going from uh, the New York Film Festival to the San Francisco Festival. It was interesting since we were there for two years ago touring too with uh, British Sound at that time to go back and to see the changes because we we think we've <coughs> we've ourselves changed a lot from that time. So it's not a it's not a loss at all. Something important to us. In terms of consumption, and using your example of the Vietnamese in America, does that mean that your voice, your sort of desire to boycott consumption in terms of Eastern Kodak and the film sellers and the movie producers, does no, that mean you're trying to consume? No, I want the country. I want to consume. That's right, you're trying to sort of take over the movie. But I don't want to consume that way. Mm -hmm. Right, but you're trying to put themselves on their level in a sense. If you were trying to put your film in that media instead of keeping your films so apart, sort of using them to push your film. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is using their means of production in order to get your product across. Their means of. Which means? You mean. Well, Kodak, I mean, you're, after all, you're still using their <coughs> products. You were saying that you became 
You of using them makes them profitable. And the yeah. fact that American people buy the film, you can't limit con consumption. People will still continue to use the film. But they want consumption, people. They are dying for consumption. That's right. People want it. And but so they don't want. They don't want to die that way. This is the problem. But you can't limit their consumption, so they will continue to support the industry. So the question to me is, how do you find alternate means of consumption so that people are still consuming? What because by consume? by breaking, not breaking the process immediately, but showing how it it works, what the process is, because, and just telling it's a process, even if in, a, in the movie business there is a, a joke, because you say you process a film, well, okay, let's hear this joke, we are in a process, we are in a capitalist, we are in a capitalist uh, way of processing things, so let's put the way it is processed, or let's ask question about the way it is processed, and laugh. And do it openly because it's hidden. As I, when Polaroid was was saying that the process of taking a picture was take a picture, see a picture, take a picture, see a picture. There is black spaces between a take a picture and see a picture, and in that black spaces is uh, is our oppression as uh, as yours. So what we put on the screen, you we put see take a picture. We put the black spaces and we put, take a picture. And the black picture, uh, then the audience is saying, what is this black space? And we say, I'm asking you. So, wait, so we are adding, we are just mm -hmm. describing in a sense, only describing it. But description, if it's not, uh, if it's hidden, by the capitalist machine who want to describe only part of it. Just think of yourself. We'd like now to think of the, to tell to the audience that we are thinking of them as if they were movie makers, filmmakers. And mm -hmm. that's what they are, in fact. Because you, you, you are, you have, you are both, uh, the tracking shot I told you about who goes from production to consumption through the media, through communication, through distribution, you are done with that too. And every day you are doing, you are building machines, a lot of machines, connecting with other machines. And in order to, to live, you are more or less having a, a coding system, let's call that a film, just for the use of the, of the conversation. You are building your own, your own film in order to direct you to direct, and this is no joke, we find very easily the way to direct you in this film and to direct you as a star. So you are both the director, the photographer, the script. So you're making, you're teaching about film. In the not no, teaching, learning, no, teaching. Le not teaching anymore, but yeah, lear I learning, learning together. What we want is to learn together because we are together in this theater. It's a connection between two types of designs. I mean, as long as you, you're building your own little machines, crazy machines, and, and at each moment of your life, which will help you to live, you're related to the machine which is on the screen, which is a machine that we, we both of us build. So it's a, it's a type of flow. I mean, it's your own, the, the, the flow of your desire going to the screen and crossing the screen. This is a, between our relation, we have, a, we have something in common. The things we have in common, we can only point it out as an external thing. This is a screen. You want to come here, and I want to come here. And our real relationship is through the screen. And because we deal with this screen as a, objectively, we put problems on it. Pro or we put emotion, but through problems. Or emo and, or, and problems through emotion. And then we can speak of us together. We are together because we are both uh, with this screen. We are not together because we are, uh, we are in front of each other. We are together because between us, even if there is no movie just right now, there is a kind of a movie which is 
crossing the flow between us. In fact, our films are far more personal than uh, than other films, and being far more personal, they're far more objective and far more realistic, and they seem not to be personal because there is a whole conception, a whole conception of what is personal and what is not personal, which is changing in the process of the film, the, the, in the way we're making films. Is it possible that the distribution problem is, is necessary, necessary because of the media you're using? That if you own the television station, No, because the since no. the movie are in the, in the capitalist system, in the, are in the media, they are... It's distribution. Where they, when they are the where they are the stronger, it's distribution. The major companies are not the stronger in producing because you can produce almost every movie you want today. For no, hardcore pornography movie, political movie. But to distribute them, it's very it's real difficult. Another because the, pa- the the people who have the power, it's it's the distribution, it's the power to distribute, the power to produce. It's difficult in the factory. The main aspect is the production, it's in the factory. But the power to distribute. I mean, the real power of, of, of a metro man belongs, that because he's a releasing man. The real power of a Ford or General Motor man uh, is because he's a producing man. A Ford dealer is not as powerful as a as a twenty fox uh, distribution man. I mean, the problem being that if you look at our, our films, I mean, uh, including to Verbiana, they're more or less TV films, and uh, some of them were really produced by TV, but banned by those TVs. We we're working, we're making TV films, but we can't get through TV channels for obvious reasons. Uh, when uh, when, for instance, uh, uh, the, the guy who produced, uh, the Italian producer who produced uh, Struggle in Italy saw the film, he came to us saying, well, as a man, I think this film is a, is a masterpiece. But as a part of the Italian TV, I refused this film, and the film was bad. So that's the situation we were in. The, the, one of the, the things which puzzled the, the, the critics, I mean, in France especially, they were not even able to talk about Tuvedia. And you, you'll see, uh, you should be aware that there is no single shot, no single noise, no single sound in Tuvedia which hasn't been heard or <coughs> seen a thousand times by a French audience. It's like reading, it's like newsreel, but newsreels made by two ma- madmen. And that's, that's the whole puzzling thing. All right, uh, I was told it was a. Uh one more question, and yeah, one more question. I was just going to say that it seems that, that uh, TV is necessarily the, the, the whole thing. You can make a broadcast one person, you know, you can broadcast on your own television channel. But it isn't necessarily. Uh, well, that's uh, up that's to now. I think TV. it's a trick, and all this uh, cab- cable system. I mean, it just uh, just the recorder. You know, the video tape recorder and your own television. Well, you mean working with video? That's yeah, a, we'll, we'll, a speak, we'll speak of it uh, more longly because uh, it's not so easy. It's, it's not so. It's not so easy. You have to be aware of the condition of. Uh, you you have to to know and understand. You can bring maybe better to on any TV set any kind of movie, but then you'll deal personally with the person and uh, what makes you so sure that the people will be interested by your movie just because you are bringing it to him because after all he's, he's receiving a hundred tons of images every day freely so why just to to get one more it's not so easy the problem with video is uh, that we think video is something very specific I mean video is cheap in a way and movie very expensive in a way but this cheapness is only the the reverse side of the same uh, the same uh, piece of money. And it's n- not because it's cheap, it, it means negative instead of positive, expensive. It's, it's not that. Because up to now, it's ex- precisely because it is cheap, then it's done exactly the same way. 
The people are shooting with video more, just more stock than they were shooting with camera. That's all. They are, instead of being Kodak men, they are Sony men. Up to now. And the real, uh, the real uh, winner is the stockholder. <laughs> Thank you. Suddenly, uh, we will remark that the main aspect of this supermarket was the longer line who remind us of the cash register sign, which remind us that like an assembly line in a car factory, instead of cars it was just cash registers. And since we wanted very strongly to relate, uh, to link this last sequence to the first one in the factory, because this is the, you may consider the whole movie just as a, just as a simple tracking shot, but in time, not in space. And uh, the shot, begins in the in a factory at the beginning uh, at a very precise moment when the factory is stopped. But in a factory, that is to say, in something where there is the production of goods. And at the end of the tracking shop, at the end of the movie, we are in a supermarket. Uh, there where the goods are going to be sold, that is the production of so to the consumer. So it's no more the production of food, but the consumption of food. And uh, we were glad to discover very spontaneously this, uh, to do it in one shot, just to emphasize more the fact that when we are consumers, we are still on, a, on production. We are still, uh, even if uh, a factory which doesn't uh, run at the same speed and the same level of production than the first one, that what is usually called a factory. But uh, this was a few things about the sequence I wanted to test. How was the supermarket sh scene shot? With stationary shot, steady shot, and tracking shot. And uh, the tracking shot for us was a possibility to. Uh, to, to flow, uh, to, to play around uh, upon the battleground. It's, uh, you, you can see that the dragging shots are used uh, first in the factory sequence, which is the, the, the in fact, we planned the film during the, this big earthquake, which is the old factory sequence, and then to study the shock wave of this earthquake, earthquake in the light of the couple. So in the, in the factory sequence, each dragging shot is leading to a point where one of the forces which define the situation in front, which is first the, uh, the management, then the, the CP and the Communist Union, and then the leftist. Each tracking shot leads to the point this force expresses itself. Uh, it's, a, it's a real, uh, it's a theatrical metaphor, which is, as Jean-Luc told you, uh, done again in the supermarket sequence, and done again another way with an empty tracking shot at the end, on that desert landscape, and during the while passing the wall, you hear again the three, the three main noises uh, which uh, define the situation in front, and it's put between a certain type of parenthesis between those uh, this incredible sound uh, song, which was a, a hit parade at that time uh, in the musical music scene in France. <laughs> The question is, how closely did you work with the actors? In, in what? In, what? In, the in carrying out the idea of the film. Well, the, the first point is that this film wouldn't have been possible if we hadn't been backed by two big stars. I mean, Jeanne Fonda and Yves Montand. 
which are not only uh, international movie stars, but are also uh, connoted a certain way politically. Jane doing a thing here and Eve being connoted another way in France. We couldn't have made this film, for instance, with Alain Delon or Catherine Denel, but that's only possible. <laughs> but you have, uh, you have to, uh, to realize that in fact in the film the real stars are not the two big stars, the two international stars, but the 20 extras who play the workers in, uh, in the factory sequence which are the real stars. And uh, at that point there is something quite interesting because we choose people uh, who never play. And you see that in fact they rediscovered certain traditions of playing, of acting, which were very much alive in the French cinema around the, the 30s. There is a, the, the old guy who plays like Gabin, there is another one who, who plays like uh, Eric Chartier, the guy with the Curly hair who plays like in the film of Jean Vigo, the old conduit. There is the redhead girl who plays like Arletti. And uh, in fact, you, ha you have a strong feeling both of individuality of each extra playing a worker and also a certain feeling of class community. It seems that you and have uh, all these different people who are very dissatisfied lives, they're all living different lives, they're all very dissatisfied with their lives. And I would like to know if you are trying to make a statement about what is a revolutionary way to live, what do you what is it? I mean all I can pull out of is everyone is very unhappy and no one has found a way that is satisfied. Yeah, but in order to find a solution we think now we have to be not to pay us with words. And uh, not to put statements on the screen, because uh, after now we, we, it's not we are not dominating the statements we are making each uh, each day or even each second. Even when uh, you put a statement like uh, "I love you" or "I will uh, pay you what I owe you tomorrow," this is statement with, which we we are dominated by the statement instead of dominating them. So I think we have to try to avoid any kind of statement and try to put on only the process of uh, who we make us able, maybe later on, to put, the, to put some statement. So we are considering the black book. We have no message to deliver. And uh, we are just using the black uh, this wise train as a blackboard and uh, we try to put problems on it through faces because this is the way the movies are, are, are working with and through faces but only problems we try to to put the how questions and not the why questions if I may say so not to answer the question who are them and who they are but how they are and what are they doing? On this black, on this movie, on this uh, white black blackboard, we put only three noises, as Jean Pierre told you, and uh, we edited these three noises in a certain way, in order to make the people, uh, the people of France, which are coming in the theater, when they are coming in the theater to see that movie, so they can maybe. We recognize those noise as as part of their life because the noise were these noises were really taken from reality. In a way, this movie is just news reels. Everything we have shot was not new to the TV uh, lookers in France because uh, it was uh, even coming from France reality. The things in the supermarket, the uh, the young, uh, the young leftists trying to, it happened in France. The selling of the uh, CP communist uh, program happened really just in a supermarket one week before we shot this sequence. Uh, all the lines pronounced in their long monologues by, uh, by the boss is taken from a book written by the director of the Credit Lyonnais, which is the uh, biggest bank in France, and the everything, everything.
interesting is the monologue about Eve Montand that came from real events in Eve lives and Jean-Pierre lives and uh, some of my life too. So you see, and it comes from reality, which has, there is just three noise, but assembled in such a way that maybe you know what's going on in France. If, if, if after this movie, somebody asks you, what kind of movie have you seen? You say, well, it was a movie about France. And do you know what's going on about France? Well, instead of saying it's bad or it's good or things and stuff like that, you can say, well, from what I've heard and see, I think there is a three social, main social forces in France. Or things like that, which is already a step forward in your knowing of, of France, if you are interested. What was the question? Repeat. Is Louis Alfred important to your political ideas? Well, I know there are people in the audience that are more than Louis that you said, but uh, the, fact, the fact is that uh, we know him. Uh, I think uh, knowing him, been working more or less with him or reading his texts, even when they were not published. It's not, uh, it's not obvious in this film, it's more obvious in previous film we've done, especially in Chicago and Italy, which is a film that you haven't seen yet, which is not released yet in this case. But uh, we know even we discuss with him, that's, that's not the main contribution to, to the film, it's very different. Did Jay Fonda have some impression on you, make such impact on you in terms of feminist consciousness in this movie? In terms of what? <laughs> Did Jane Fonda have? Would you repeat that? Did Jane Fonda have an impact on you in improving the feminist consciousness of this movie? The part of the feminist consciousness. Well, uh, I don't think it's exactly Jane. I think it's more our own personal life and the way they were set on fire by the fact that the women we were living with were involved in the movie. How lucky is a back work in France to see this film? How like how likely is a factory work in France to see this film rather than you know ninety percent of people? The question is how likely is it for a factory worker in France to see the film as opposed to say students? Well, I, I think it's just like here. I mean, the, it's a fact that here the movie is shown in a, in a state university and not in a private property. The workers, the working class, wherever it is in the Western world, are mainly looking to movie on their TV receivers and not on the theater. Uh, it's in France, it was released commercially uh, you know, uh, because the uh, manner was uh, given by the biggest uh, French uh, distribution company, which is uh, Gaumont and, uh, and an Italian uh, co producer. So, up to now, the film has been released uh, commercially uh, and, uh, in, in the usual way by, uh, uh, by Gaumont and, uh, in France and in Italy. It was not a success for the distributor, but for us it was because for the first time with this, with, with what we consider a new, a new way of making movie, even if it's a very tiny step forward, it's already for us a new, a new way, and it was important to try to reach by that time, five, uh, almost five years after the major <coughs> events of 68 in France, to reach more people than we have reached before with uh, other movie. With other movie. And, uh, on, the, on the question of the, the reaction of the workers, I mean, we, we had uh, some inquiries because uh, some workers were closely related to, to through uh, three years of cinematographical practice. Uh, I've seen the movie. And, uh, the first thing is they were uh, really, uh, you know, delighted, if I can say so, by the fact that 
we had uh, uh, cope with the realistic tradition, which is uh, the normal tradition of film dealing with social events. They were, you know, very glad that for the first time a film about workers was not made in the way video man made the sort of the end. But they made a main critic, and this main critic was that uh, our way to uh, look to the working class, our way to uh, portray it, was uh, too black and white. I mean, uh, we were just saying that workers were the good guys in the film, and they personally don't feel like that at all. I mean, uh, when they when they go to a factory and they explain that, speaking about this movie, and each time they go to work, they feel real mean and real bastard because they know they're going to lose their life, and they really want uh, some of these contradictions to be explained. Well, uh, we'll be working on that in the next week. There's another problem, I think, with your conception of reality, that struck me, and that's the idea of portraying the director as a complete buffoon. Whether or not the language was actually used, I mean, the theory exists among the ruling class, yes, but does not the comic relief aspect of that director undermine the seriousness and the strength of the opposition that is actually faced, not some weaklings running around in office buildings pissing out windows, but who can easily be uh, you know, kicked out you know, by, by jokes or songs, but a real serious, deep social Problem, which I think was run out well in advertising at supermarkets, etc. Well, uh, it's. Uh, yeah, what is the question there? I mean, no, but I answer, I answer it because there, there is a real problem. Uh, I, I think if you. Uh, it's a certain type of. How do you say that in English? Decalage. Uh, there's a certain sliding effect, I mean, uh, but the fact is that we were in a certain way trapped by the way uh, Vittorio Capioli, the guy who is playing the, the, the boss, was playing, is a, is a fantastic Russian actor. He has been working for long with the people of the Atour de Milan, and uh, <clears throat> he's, he's, really a, he's really a good actor. But maybe you, you, you may be right in that sense that he, he made too, too, much of, uh, too much of an effort towards uh, some kind of distanciation. But nevertheless, if you look uh, carefully at your TV when Nixon is speaking, it's more or less exactly the same.
long hair, instead of short hair, no, no uniform, no different kind of uniform. But it's a very, it looks to me like, like an hospital, you know, and maybe, or a clinic. And I think, I met a, a lot of, there is something with, really, I, I understand that, that there was a book in France recently published, which, which I think is very important. His name was uh, Capitalism and Schizophrenia. And I understand, and it, it's a book which explains that the capitalist machine is in fact, uh, capi is in fact a schizophrenia machine, working with a schizophrenic machine. But working, that, that this machine is run by paranoia people, and this is capitalism. And we have a very, we, we feel that, I came in the state, I've come in the state about uh, 20 times in 10 years, and I must say uh, I'm a bit more both frightened and puzzled because I can see that more openly than uh, 10 years ago. There is something very clear in it and, uh, and strange the difficulty to, to, speak to, be, to speak to people who just want statements, for example, from us, and they are absolutely really not interested by those statements. And they can't escape that, there is always this kind of answer and questions game, and we are not really interested, but we, we, do, we don't know. There is something very strange to it's the money question. We discover, we receive check, uh, it is business, we do every time we come in a university in exchange of our work, we receive a check from the university. But after, we have a tremendous difficulty to just to catch this check. <laughs> <laughs> and we realize that the people are just a, really afraid of catch. That's that I understand the first the check was invented, so the people it was invented by American businessmen, the check, not by European, by American. <laughs> so because the people won't look at the cash anymore, just an image of cash, which was a check. And now they don't even believe in check anymore, there is only the credit card. <laughs> it's, it's much more sophisticated. And they are really afraid of the dough, but the dough must be somewhere. <laughs> no one, no one sees, there is just flow, you, you say cash flow, there is huge flow of cash, but we, we think, we think we are trying to do it, but it's impossible. Yeah, we No, no, you really, you know, you'll be um, more precise. Things that happened to you, which prompted you to create this uh, in your own life, and how this was an expression of that. Distribution, but not in terms of production. 
So we decided that the main question was production. How to produce certain film and which type of film to produce. So we worked, uh, we worked doing uh, seven films together. And uh, most of them were produced by TV and banned by TV. Uh, and that's, that's one of the problems, because if you look carefully to Tu Verbien, Tu Verbien is a TV film. But in fact, we can't do those TV films and pass them through the, the, the channel of TV. The main change was, in fact, to work, to work uh, together, to be two to, to work. I mean, it's uh, still, for us, uh, it's a big scandal in France. Uh, in fact, it's uh, something quite normal. I mean, uh, there is no, no filmmaker who, making a film, can think about himself in, in terms of uh, an author, as a writer or as a painter. Because when you speak, when you're making a film, you deal as much uh, with aesthetics as you deal with, with money and dollars. The, the, the same the words are, you know, as often used. And uh, <clears throat> one interesting thing is that, personally, I mean, I couldn't do film with anybody else than Jean-Luc because he had really uh, shaken up the whole cinematography tradition. And uh, I wanted to work with him. And, but because especially he was a revolutionary, he has concentrated on him all the myth of the author. So that's why people don't really uh, get into the fact that we're two to make films. And that's the big change. Yeah, the big change for me was to to know that in order to to do something new and in the movie, since I was in the movie, was not to invent a new car or to invent a new uh, way of uh, editing or to, uh, to take or to invent a new way of acting or to write new scripts. At a certain time, I just find myself uh, in the impossible, complete impossibility of inventing new things. And then I was, uh, I, I hear the very near me, the huge noise of the major events in, in France. And at the same time, somebody was coming to me asking, uh, I want to make a movie. And I said, okay, I'll give you some money if I have and uh, uh, make your own movie. Or, and he said, no, I want to make a movie. I want to be two to make a movie. I don't want to make a movie alone. I don't want to be an author. I don't want to be a, an artist. I don't want to be God on the set. I want to be, I want to be two. And to me, it was a great discovery. And I begin, I began to, under, to understand that in order to be better myself, I need the real need, and this was a social, uh, it came from the social changes in, in France, the real need, I really need someone else to be better, better me, if I may say so. It was a great discovery to, to discover that uh, when Jean-Pierre is inventing uh, something, for example, I'm glad to work on it. Uh, six years ago, I was jealous. I always wanted to be the first one to invent something. Now it's something which, is, which I really don't care. And because of Jean-Pierre, for example, with, uh, through my, if I think of my uh, sexual life, I can understand that with the woman I'm uh, living with. I can understand that uh, if I want to be the first one, I mean, she's the... Uh, I can understand that she wants to, and so we have to be two, and it works. And I can begin to understand love as, a, as work too, or work as love. <laughs> Repeat all this question last twice. For the second time, we've been asked this question. It was written in Seattle, too. We really don't know nothing about it. But I will say that. It's a locally produced yeah. Maybe, but I won't say it. Is your name Moyer? <laughs> Reactions to other filmmakers. <laughs> no, really, we have uh, really nothing to say about that. 
they are about to be. I think these things about to be too is very funny because it's uh, it happens this morning again. You know, it happens first. People really what hurt the people, what's hurting the people, they are the critics or the usual people who think of movies. That we are really too. There is two directors, and they just can't understand that. The there is a, a company which is called Unicron's Film, which is in charge of the advertising of French film outside the country. And uh, it's a company who pays the tickets when French directors are going to festivals. And this year, uh, we were invited to New York Film Festival, and so they had, uh, this company has to pay the tickets. They refused to pay the tickets, because they said there is can be only one director. So I went to, to see them. I said, well, if it's a question of money, since we are two, pay half a ticket. But pay two times half a ticket. And they say, no, they refuse. <laughs> this morning, we went in an interview in a small a TV studio right here. And when we arrived, we saw an uh, interview with Jean-Luc Godard. And I said, there is to director. An hour ago, we spoke for an hour of that. So, will you kindly put the name of Jean-Pierre Gaulard? They couldn't find the letters. <laughs> <laughs> and so, there were no credits. He said, okay, we had a chair. So, it's not over. Okay, we had a chair. So, there was two chair, and we said, the director, he ordered to the cameraman, when I say you to begin, you begin with this first. You see? Anyway, that's bullshit. You spoke of your business as being an art, as being in the art business, uh, that you were an artist, uh, which, by comparison to the white collar workers or the blue collar workers, rather, in the factories who work by their sweat, is sort of a, an elitist job. Don't you? in truth, sometimes feel hypocritical for that from this position, you make movies about people who do, I mean, who do work by, you know, their, the sweat of their body from your elitist position. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you find this uh, a conflict in you? Well, uh, as Duchamp said, well, there is uh, no solution because there is no problem. I mean, uh, we're working in a very specific kind of factory, which is a factory dealing with images and sounds. We're working and we're doing films because we feel that in our own lives we need, uh, we need some change to happen. And we want those changes and those differences to be put on the screen. We're working to talk to people and to talk to people who had to listen to them. And do believe me, the workers we're connected with don't really think the way you think. And the more we always try to be more specific, to speak where we are and not where we are not. Even if we are, when we are in a theater, we want to speak of this theater, not just because, not just the, the name of the theater, but what's the social, uh, things going on, how it, how it works. I mean, uh, what makes us sit here and talk, and what makes you come here, because if we can settle uh, what are we doing here for an hour, maybe uh, at home or in the factory, we'd be more able to know uh, what makes us go in the factory and be, and be crazy. When the argument or discussion first began, what was her logic as opposed to his concerning what made up their life together? Okay, he enumerated the things that they did together, and then she pointed out. further pointed out. Would you go over that one more time, if you're willing, and sort of clarify it? Well, okay, but tell me the things which are not clear enough for you, so I can uh, try to answer. 
I didn't understand the point that she was trying to make beyond what she was saying that they did together. Okay, it's rather clear because uh, Eve, speaking of his life with uh, with Jay, I mean, uh, of his, Jack speaking of his life with Susan, uh, he said we are doing three things, and Jane, very just as a child, uh, could show him that when uh, where Eve is seeing three things, three images or three sound. Jade is seeing it then. And so she is uh, putting uh, on the imaginary screen, which is uh, across their, their talking, she's putting new images and new sound and asking for new editing because there is uh, new sound and new images. She's, in effect, building another film than the one. Uh, the one uh, bit by it. In fact, she's focusing on differences. And because she w she wants uh, changes, she has to put to to, pull it, to lay down on, on the to, to to put on the floor the differences to to show to it how how they are different. And then because they are different and what the difference is what the, because when you are interested in differences, then it means you are interested in changes. And it's because in this sequence or in this movie, Jane was really, uh, the character played by Jane, was really uh, interested in differences because she just couldn't uh, stand uh, the kind of stuff she was working on. She was stopping, she couldn't write anymore what she was paid for, for writing. Instead, he said, was in a way still, even if he said, I hate commercials, since it was with those lovely girls with stockings, he did with his desire, and nevertheless what he said, he likes it in a certain way. I think it's a good point that you made that if he had decided, and they had both decided and agreed, that this was more honest work to work as the commercials, but he'd been resting on that for three years and wasn't accepting any change. He wasn't ready for change, as she was. To say that he was resting since four or five years, there, is a, there was a strong need for him and a strong uh, likeness uh, to this kind of business. When we feel about this sequence, in, in fact, right now, I mean, there is, there is a difficulty you should be aware of. This film has been made nine months ago, and it's uh, very complicated for us to uh, speak about it. Film we made nine months ago because we are absolutely elsewhere right now. And uh, one one point is uh, I think the, the thing which is not satisfying in, uh, in this sequence that we're still thinking about uh, and food about sexual re sexual relationship in terms of production. And it's not it's not complete. I mean, you need to uh, think about sexual relationship in in terms of consumption, in terms of exhaustion. And uh, it's uh, it's a more more tricky thing. I mean, we'll be working on mainly in the in the next film. And the fact that in a sexual relationship there is a an element of huge irony because the the sexual body, the sexual corpse, is in fact made of elements of the social corpse that distort this very end, which is touching a camera is going to be and connected with a pen when she's writing a script, is going to be connected with the ass. And when you shake my hand, you don't know if it's full of, or not of sperm because I masturbated myself two hours ago in my motel room. And there is a, there is a huge irony that we can work on. I think that's, that's why uh, the, the, the ruling class and the ruling ideology was so afraid about you know, uh, anything which was uh, connected with, uh, with the sexual life. Well, what, what we what we discovered was the fact that, uh, and we didn't discover it really. I mean, uh, Vertov, uh, the flag, uh, the flag we raised three years ago, Vertov said it a, a more proper way in time. 
He was saying, well, there is three stages in the process of making a film. There is editing before the shooting, editing while, while you're shooting, and editing in the editing room. So we spent a lot of time uh, in the first stage editing before the shooting. That means that all the members of the crew, but in this film it was not possible. We were mainly you know, having priorities and mainly working with the guy who made the photo of the, 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 the photograph of the film, is Armand Marco, and he's been working for, with us for four years. And we'll be the, the, editing, the editing girl we use. So, uh, I mean, it's a, a way to involve the people in, which are involved in the process of the film for, from the beginning. So not to, so that they won't be afraid when on the set, because we're co-directing, when huge fight, I mean, a huge disagreement aroused between Jean-Luc and me, they will they be able to overcome and just to, to see the duty. It's a, it's a way to change the whole hierarchy of filmmaking. Well, for the actors and actors who never make decisions about what appears on the screen, or they're just used to it. Uh, no, I, uh, for precisely for this film, for a very obvious reason, because Jean-Luc Villeneuve, because all uh, thousands of thousands of actors, uh, they were not able to be involved as much as we wanted to. But in the previous film, for instance, they had a, uh, we, not, we were not using big stars, and that was another problem. We were really involved in them, and they had their, their wings began, the writers began, it influenced a lot uh, uh, the kind of did you have trouble bringing the film to America in terms of, of like, with the subtitles? Like, do you do the translating yourself or does somebody do it outside of you? And, and what do you feel about somebody deciding what to, to, to translate into your words? I mean, for the, for the subtitles, I feel like, yeah, the first draft was done by a guy named Bush, and the second draft was done by David Newman, uh, the guy who worked with Robert Denton and uh, Bunny and Bunny. And I think the, the subtitles are pretty good, they're, they're very casual, and uh, it's, it's a good word for us. I feel, I feel a little tension by the, the final comment of the film. That seems to me to be a statement which you say you're trying to get away from in your film. I felt defensive about the last statement in the film. Just put it in a paradox way, and since it's, uh, I didn't want it, these things to be to be said, and the job here with it, so he will explain. <laughs> Mainly to the fact that, as Jean Luc pointed out earlier, uh, there is no uh, there is no sound, no image in Tuvavien which hasn't been seen or heard a thousand times by a French audience. And uh, one of the reasons of the, the bad reaction of the critics was that they were really facing a newsreel, a newsreel made by two madmen. And beside that, there is in the French, uh, in the French, a conte for ceux qui ne, pour ceux qui n'en tiennent aucun. Uh, so it's, a, it's a kind of joke on the words, which can't be translated in English, and which doesn't give the, the impression of the statement. The comment at the end said, seems to me to say, you will love the audience. Oh no. No, because we consider ourselves. No, because we consider ourselves as the foolish one who still need that kind of tale too. So why make this movie? No, in French we use the same word for a tale and an account. And so there is a kind of a joke between, because there is the account in a bank and, and a tail, and a, there is a, and the, so we anyway, can. Anyway, it's very funny in French. You talked earlier about not wanting to make any kind of statement in the film because it will be recuperated by somebody else. Could you elaborate on that, particularly in relation to the people who work in situations? 
Well, I think that you can see it quite clearly in Tibet now. Our problem is not to uh, raise answers, but to try to raise new, new questions. <clears throat> so uh, it works on that level. We're mainly interested in disconnecting the so-called normal events which our lives are submitted to. In, in this way, we can't just describe a, a film saying, well, the film is just a machine, but a very special type of machine, a mad machine, because the pieces of this machine are just torn parts of the whole body of the society, and the interest of a, a, film, a, a film machine is the fact that it's failed at each moment. I think there is a, a key sequence in Tuvemir, which is the sequence when the guy is painting around the painting and then painting in the painting. And by the way, this sequence are good by chance, because uh, we uh, choose, we had chosen for the set a very uh, heavy blue, and when the film was processed, it was uh, getting on the rushes almost dark, almost black. And we decided to use a, a lighter blue, the blue the guy is, is using to paint around the painting. And uh, seeing the rushes, we had the idea that it was impossible to direct the people a better way. So we had the idea to have this guy painting around the painting. And in fact, it's a perfect image of what the film intends to be, because the people we share something with, whether related in literature, whether in painting, are really people uh, of whom you can perceive that their, their gesture is going outside the page or outside the painting. To <laughs> again, a film full of openings, and in English, openings has a, both a sexual connotation, a political connotation, and other meanings too. And uh, you can't look at a frame of To uh, per se, it's always something evading from itself. I think films are really. Uh, uh, a film is really made of the connection of things. It's a matter of scotch tape, nothing else. This kind of efforts were part of the movement, and uh, the movement is Francis in the same uh, uh, on the same uh, stage as it is uh, here. All the movement, at least uh, we are still two, and only two, and uh, we still. Feel uh, very much alone, and we just try to speak of our loneliness from a different point of view. Try to find to speak where we are. No, it's each thing. I mean, we choose the phrase, we discuss on color, we discuss on lighting, we discuss on the lines. It's, uh, it's from, I think the, the relationship between John, John and me is really some type of uh, connection between two types of matters. And uh, it's, it's, not, it's not by chance. I mean, the people we really like, whether in writing or whether in, uh, in music, are people which were whether exact people like Joyce, or bilingual people, or uh, people considered by the society as uh, schizophrenic people like Arthur. And uh, that's, that's what the, the kind of thing which was in John Um Could we have just one more question so we can get on with letter to change? And John Luther, please the talk. Yes. question is, what is your debt to crack? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, obviously, uh, obviously this film is deeply committed to aggression. And uh, this, is, this is one of the difficulties and one of the contradictions we're, we're, uh, we're facing. As Jean-Luc said, we trade our debts to aggression by doing this film. 
I mean, the contradiction is to use a theoretical background which was brought up in the 30s to make a film in the 70s. And what we're just realizing now is that we were obliged to make that kind of detour, but that maybe the type of description that Brecht brought up about the relationship between the audience and the screen is some kind of crap. Because uh, maybe the all the distanciation effect that he produced is only valid if you consider that there is what is called the, the, the involvement of the effect. And we think that really the relationship between the audience and, uh, and the screen is not of that type. Because we have a strong feeling, and we have it here right now, this precise moment, that there is no two filmmakers in front of an audience of people who do not make film, but that you are all filmmakers, in the sense that in your own life, at each moment, you're building those type of machines that we, we're trying to build with Tuvagia. And that the relationship between you and the screen is a kind of a flow relationship. I mean, something you you're not just diving into the screen; you're crossing the screen. It's uh, and in this crossing of the screen, there there are effects which are produced. So for us, there was a detour through Brescia, but maybe now we will have to be working on the same basis. I just add a few words and a little introduction to A Letter to Jane. Uh, a Letter to Jane is a, a picture we made just to try to, not to introduce to Babian, but to speak of to Babian in a different, uh, in a different way with the audience. It was done specifically for, for the American audience and there's no French uh, version of it. It's a picture we have done in one day which cost, uh, Three, between three and four hundred dollars. It's related. Uh, the real title should be investigation about a steel or anatomy of a steel. It's a picture made with one steel, a steel which was produced by the taken and produced by the North Vietnamese and James Fonda during uh, James' trip in Hanoi. And uh, we are just raising some question of trying to know how was it really produced and then how was it distributed. And this relation between the production and the distribution before it goes to consumption because I received this I received this picture in France through the media and was looking at it. I was in the act in the act of consuming it with my eyes, with, with my eyes. And uh, it deals with the same problem of Tuvabian, because as I pointed out, Tuvabian, there is three parts. First part, there is the production part, the factory. And then, at the end, there is the consumption part, the supermarket. But between them, there is, there is the, called, what's called the distribution of goods, the way the goods are bought driven to consumption and they are driven through the media, through advertising business in, in, or journalists and that's why we picked up those two jobs and these are where the intellectual, the people are not, which the people who are working not with their, with their hands but with their, their heads are working school and university, we could have picked up instead of an Men uh, being in uh, the advertising business, we could have uh, put uh, Yves Morton as a teacher in a university. It would have been the same because it's a university, you know, it is kind of advertising uh, for good. And so uh, the media, this picture, anatomy of the state, is a picture, it's an inquiry about what's the media. And since what the media is a huge question. There is a million and millions of images and sound uh, distribu distributed all over the so-called uh, free world. That we 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 use uh, we say the time, but we use it when 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 we say say the time. I understand it that says my time, says your time. And that let's take our time in order to look at the one still, 
put it under microscope or telescope, uh, whatever you want, because the, the lens is a kind of microscope or telescope. So this is a scientific experiment. And something more is a kind of provocative picture. And if we are asked, why did, why did we do this picture? For whom is it? For what kind of audience? We say this picture is done for the 10 or 20 people which will remain in the theater at the end of the picture. So don't feel obliged to stay generally with the answer card after the first 10 minutes.